I'm here today with Nick Holthouse from Meteoric Resources. How are you today, Nick? Oh, fantastic. Uh, Tracy, how are you? You were brought to my attention through our co-chairman, Ian Chalmers, about a year ago when we were looking at rare earth projects around the world and rising stars that people may not be aware of. And Ian's forecast was correct. Uh, obviously, Meteoric should be on everybody's watch list. Oh, look, that's really flattering, Tracy, and it's it's great to hear. We've had a very uh, a very busy year. Uh, we've set ourselves some very aggressive targets, and I'm really pleased to say that we, at this stage, we appear to be hitting all of them. So uh, it's been a great, successful year, and it's nice to be recognised. So thanks very much for that. You're on the road, Tampa, New York, Washington, D.C. For those of you out there going, who is Meteoric Resources? How about we start there? For sure. Well, I guess uh, to summarise Meteoric Resources, we have a a, uh, a quite a unique asset in uh, in the state of Minas Gerais in Brazil. It's an ionically adsorbed clay deposit. Now, what that means is that uh, it's quite different from other um, rare earth deposits in the sense that Mother Nature's done a lot of that heavy lifting in the front end. We have a uh, the, the the robust parent minerals that come along that the rare earths are contained within have been broken down uh, through a very prolonged weathering process. Uh, and this is all contained within a volcanic cold air, and it's very much like a contained vessel. So there's no opportunity for those molecules to escape once they've been broken down, uh, as you would see in a uh, in a more typical laterite type uh, deposit. Um, they're trapped and they're self enriched, and they're weathering down on on top of themselves. And for that reason, we're seeing these fantastic grades, uh, which makes this project different to most. That and the fact that they are highly weathered, and that means that it uh, allows us to use the very simple um, uh, ammonium sulfate wash uh, to liberate those those molecules and uh, and precipitate them down into a carbonate. So we have a very simple flow sheet, very high grades, very high recoveries. Of course, uh, CMI uh, other co-chair Jack Lifton is always talking about ionic clays, and this is one of your clear advantages. Would you agree? Absolutely, absolutely. But it, you know, as I said before, it's the it's that. It's that combination of grade and these very high recoveries which really make this this project different. You know, a typical uh, clay deposit sits in the in the realms of somewhere between seven hundred to twelve hundred ppm, uh, and you would have seen from our maiden uh, maiden inferred resource that we announced to market uh, around ten months ago, we have around four hundred nine million tons at around two thousand six hundred ppm. But more importantly, inside that four hundred nine million tons, we have over a hundred million tons at an elevated cutoff grade. Of over 4,000 ppm, and that's really the focus for our uh, our studies going forward, uh, which will be uh, which we are working very hard on, and uh, and hoping to get us ourselves into production by 2027. We have companies around the world scouring the planet to find rare earth projects. So I'm going to ask you the obvious question: How did you find such an amazing project? Tracy, this is a really long question to ask, <laughs> but I'll try and give you the I'll try and give you the short version. Uh, it really comes down to a matter of relationships, and it's through our chairman Andrew Tunks. Um, so the the project is uh, the leases, the licenses are privately owned by a, uh, a group called the Tonya Group. They have been in the cold era for the last 120 years. They're Italian immigrants that moved to Brazil around that time. They were brickmakers, and they they chose the cold era because of the very fine grain clays. Who knew that there were areas in there at that time? Uh, so that's really been the focus for them. More recently, they've pivoted away from from house and uh, uh, house bricks and tiles, roofing tiles, um, to uh, foundry bricks. So it's a much more uh, sophisticated operation now. Very high tech. Still, they use a lot of clay. Uh, so for that reason, they've accumulated quite a few licenses within the cold era. Uh, it came to their attention some time ago that they uh, that they had uh, rare earth elements within those clays. They were approached by Jogmec. Uh, Jogmec were uh, signed an agreement with the Tonya family and they embarked on an exploration program between 2016 and 2019. Um, there are a few reasons for Jogmec not going through that deal. Uh, it wasn't a particularly well-structured deal with regard to royalties. It was very much front-ended. Uh, and when they started encountering the depths and the grades, uh, that they they came across the, the royalties very quickly made that... Uh, made that uh, a very uneconomical proposition to go forward with. That combined with COVID saw Jogmec walk away from the project and leave the data set with the Tony family. 
the Tony family shopped that project around for the next few years uh, without much success. And it, uh, this is where it comes back to the relationship story, Tracy, uh, a young geologist that was working with Andrew Tunks in the Amazon basin some 10 years ago. Uh, Andrew helped uh, this young guy write his thesis. Um, he, uh, he, being a relation of the family, he asked for a one-pager. He took that to uh, Andrew Tunks, uh, and the rest is history. Uh, once they realised the uh, the potential of the asset, um, Andrew flew to Brazil and secured the asset. So it's uh, it's really a it's really come through by means of happenstance and uh, and good solid relationships. Well, I think it probably goes a little further than that because your luck seems to abound everywhere. We've been watching Neo Performance materials for at least a decade, if not longer. It's an amazing company, and you just announced a partnership agreement with them. Do you mind hitting some of the highlights of that deal? Absolutely. Uh, being a, still you know, being a non-binding agreement, but nonetheless an important one for us. Um, and we think it uh, it really uh, promotes uh, the Cold Era project um, with regards to Neo. They're you know they're an established um, company that's uh, moved into the separation uh, portion of the downstream and in, even into magnets at this stage. Uh, but they really see the potential for this. Uh, they are they are a quality company. They are not a company that would sign off takes uh, uh, unless they were convinced that there was uh, some opportunities there with regards to the quality of the asset and the scale of the asset, and they certainly see that in the Caldera project. They've been to site. Uh, they've done their own due diligence, and then I think uh, that coupled with the very recent um, announcement that we made around the, uh, the met test work results and that precipitation of the carbonate story, the very clean carbonate that we were able to produce in an unoptimised uh, metallurgical program in a first pass uh, with a range of impurities that satisfy very much, pretty much all separators uh, outside of China at this stage uh, made it a very attractive proposition. So we very quickly uh, came to an arrangement. It's a good arrangement for us. As I said, it demonstrates to the market that we have a um, not only a great asset but also have the ability to to make a great product that's... Uh, that's uh, uh, directly saleable um, and as as of high value, um, but also the the relationship extends to technical assistance as well. So we're very much looking forward to uh, Neo's uh, support in in that area as well. They've been around for a long time. They've done a lot of stuff in the downstream space, and we we're certainly looking to leverage off that experience and apply that to our own business. Nick, I applaud you again for making a deal with Neo Performance Materials, and since you're moving. I guess like meteoric resources should work, should be moving. What should we as shareholders anticipate in this upcoming quarter? Well, look, it's going to be quite an exciting uh, quarter, Tracy. There's a lot of really good news flow. So uh, we have a lot. We have parallel work streams going uh, in place at the moment. We, as I said before, we have a very aggressive timeline. We are looking to bring this project to market as quickly as possible. Uh, and to do that, we need to do a lot of these work programs in parallel. Uh, firstly, permitting. Uh, we're just about to lodge our EIS report. Uh, we have great support from the State Government of Minister Reyes. When we've been afforded critical project status by the State Government of Minister Reyes. And what that does is it really translates into a finite permitting timeline. And we're about 25% of the way through that timeline now, about six months in. And, and absolutely on track. So that's 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 good news. And we'll be we'll be sharing that with the market very shortly. Just an update to market around that. Um, and it also demonstrates the fact that we are absolutely on track for that end of 2025 construction permit deadline. And that really, in theory, that allows us to break ground and get going with construction. So really, it's really driving all the other work packages that we have. On the resource side, uh, we're very close to announcing our first resource update. Uh, that's for the Suburbo resource. Southern tenements, the six, the three southern tenements form are integral for our, uh, our, our maiden processing plant. Uh, that's where our studies are focused. That's where our environmental studies are focused. Uh, so the first of those will be coming to market very soon. So we're excited to do that. That'll be next week. Um, followed very closely uh, a few weeks after that by the second licence. And once we have those two licences, the scoping study, um, really excited to bring that to market. There's some really great numbers in there, which I'm, I can't wait to share with uh, with the rest of the world. Uh, those uh, that, that, actually, that study is... is uh, waiting for those measured and indicated tonnes to come from uh, those two resource updates. We can't announce it with inferred tonnes. Uh, so we, uh, we'll be bringing that to market in June. We'll have those two licences, the two resource updates. We'll take those tonnes and grade. 
we'll reschedule them, we'll fold them back into the uh, financial model uh, that supports the scoping study and then be able to announce those metrics to market. So some significant updates to market coming. Well, it certainly sounds like it. And from all the emails I'm receiving, you have a lot of support. Nick, thank you for joining us. And for everybody interested in Meteoric Resources, please go to their website. Thank you, Nick. Thanks very much for your time, Tracy.